All right, so we got an interesting cutting job that's just perfect for the marble saw. Um, one of the things that you can do on the marble saw that's, that's hard to do on a, uh, a swinging horizontal type saw is you can make straight in cuts. And in this case, I have a big piece of cast iron here and I want to just cut down to the line. Then I'll turn it 90 degrees and I'll cut it off and I'll end up with two pieces. And I don't want to sit there and watch it or push it in the, bands, in the vertical band saw. So this is actually a really good example of something you can do on this. So let's check it out. All right, here's the piece I want to cut. And the column on the, uh, the marble runs uh, uh, straight in and straight out. And I also have the ability to set a stop. So if I want to stop at a certain uh, point, it's really easy to do that. So I can walk off and go do something else and then come back and it'll have stopped, you know, on my line or a little past or whatever, right? So let's, just, let's look at the stops and how the stops work. All right, so here's, so this is the stop rod and it's got a, uh, a little, cam, it's got a cam on it and uh, this is a sliding piece that I can set anywhere I want. And when this cam runs up on this, it twists this bar and actuates this micro switch over here and shuts the saw off. So um, I had already, I already put a mark on it, so uh, I'm kind of cheating here a little bit. So I was at the end of the, it, or this beginning of the cut, and then I just measured from where the stop was to where I want to stop, and I'm just going to put the stop right there. And let's go a little bit past just to make sure it cuts it all the way. And I'm going to lock that down, and then when this cam gets to here, it's going to click it off and then I'll hear the saw has stopped and I'll just come over and either go a little farther or turn it for the next cut. Then it also has a, it has a hard stop too to keep you from going uh, too far one way or the other, but uh, you hardly ever use those. So let's, uh, let's get a cut going. Alright, so I think I'm plugged in. There she goes. I'll bring it up. Started. Engage the feed. Now this is the feed mechanism. You can see the handle just turning very slowly. Okay. And then this guy over here is a weight uh, that I can vary the feed pressure with this by sliding this weight back and forth. And then this uh, little lever here disconnects the feed like so. Pretty cool. So that's the start of that's the start of a cast iron lap there. Now I'm gonna reverse this thing and I'm gonna cut grooves in this direction too. And I have a, uh, a precision stop set this time uh, so that all the bottoms of these grooves end up in the right in the same spot. I'll show you that. All right, so here's my precision stop. When I come up to the indicator, I can just go to a zero. And then I know with actually pretty good precision uh, that <clears throat> the, all those saw grooves are at the same depth. So, uh, which is, you know, it's just kind of a, a workmanlike touch, you know, so that they all end up at the same level and they look nice. All right, there's the finished lap. And um, so I cut it at 90 degrees the other way. And you can see it's pretty good. Uh, I got one that's kind of off a little bit. I must have... 
went to Bozo land or whatever, and I was taking the measurement. But it's still, it's going to be fine for the lap. Then I surface ground the top of it. Um, you know, this is a small enough one here that uh, that's going to be flat enough for what I want to do. And then what I'm doing here is I reground this. Uh, this is a cute little uh, Anton uh, V block. And I reground the uh, the outside of it and the V. And what I want to do is I want to just mess around and uh, and lap the V um, and see you know how nice of a finish I can put on there and how flat I can get that uh, that the V part of the uh, the V block the V part of the V block. Okay. So uh, anyway, that's what this lap's about. And then we'll uh, we'll give that a go and um, see where we end up. All right, there's our cast iron lap, and uh, kind of ready to go. I just put it in this vise just so it's more stable. Here's our V-block, and then here's how we're going to um, address the lap, like so. Okay, and then I can turn this around, so I use both sides of the lap. I really want to concentrate on down pressure here, uh, one side at a time. So this is a... Uh, 3 micron. It's pretty fine, although the grind's pretty fine too. So, uh, and this is an aluminum oxide uh, slurry. Um, and we're just going to give that a go and see how it uh, how it performs here. Sure, why not? All right. Okay, you see that dark stuff? That means it's doing something. <laughs> so I want to come I want to come off the end just a little bit, not enough to make it unstable, but enough that I'm using the whole surface of the lap. Let me turn this around. And You know, this is one of those things that uh, you gotta you gotta try it a little bit to kind of to kind of work it. Okay, um, I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it. Okay, I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it. I'm letting the abrasive do its do its little job there. Okay, and not uh, trying to force it. So this is one of those, uh, you know, you gotta, gotta have some patience, right? And concentrate on, you know, good movements as opposed to, uh, you know, trying to do it fast, right? So this is a pretty boring video, right? <laughs> so let me uh, let me work this for a little while, and then uh, we'll come back and uh, see what I can do. All right, so we're I don't know. That's maybe ten minutes later from screwing around there. Let's see if I can show this on video. Clean it. You spend a lot of time cleaning. Let's see if that shows up pretty good. It's starting to come up nice. Now, I put some tape on this side to protect it because, um, you know, it's kind of tracking along the side of the lap and, uh, um, and this hasn't really had any preparation. So uh, it's just a guiding surface now, but uh, so we'll work that a little bit and then um, we'll switch to diamond it, uh, once we get it uh, looking pretty good. And then uh, we'll uh, see uh, how good we can do there. Let's turn that so you guys... Well, you spend a, a fair amount of time cleaning stuff. I'm just cleaning the lap out. And this is just water with a little simple green, but 
what I do is I, you know, the water stays with the, uh, out in the shop, so it's really the same temperature as everything else in the shop, so, I mean, sure, hot water works better, but now you change the shape of the lap, although this one's probably not a big deal, but uh, um, if you're doing a big flat surface, you can cause the lap to change shape, so. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. Can you see yourself? <laughs> So the lap is dry right now, but it's still charged with the aluminum oxide uh, micro lap. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to use the lap um, just with the charge that's on it. And I'm going to wet it with a little bit of uh, Kingsford. Uh, this is just lighter fluid, so wet that. Just to keep things flowing. So I want most of that off of there. All right, and then we're just gonna So, you know, the the particles embed in the lap. So, we're just using what's what's there to uh to do the finish work. So I'm going to keep my finger on there. This is, you know, there's, it's kind of like filing a little bit, right? There's uh, some um, kind of uh, relaxing component of this, you know, rhythmic. Usually I have the radio on and uh, just kind of zone out and get in the groove, right? All right, let's clean that and see what we got here. Okay. Oh, by the way, and you go through a lot of towels too. <laughs> That's the other thing. Yeah, this one's this towel's uh, kind of dirty there. Oh yeah, so I got there's a solvent film on there right now. So let's uh, let me get my other little fancy rag out here. This is and this is just a uh, one of these. Uh, what do you call it? Anastat? What do you call this? Uh, all right. Well, I think it's about time to. Uh, Switch over to some diamond there. Give that a go and see if we can brighten that up a little bit more. So the edges look pretty good. I haven't rolled the edges over or anything kooky there. I don't want to drag this through my, my puddle of mud here. Yeah, okay. That looks pretty good. So yeah, I think we're gonna switch to oh yeah. Switch to diamond and uh, and get that final really nice uh, nice finish on it. This is a three micron diamond uh, from AccuFinish, and uh, this is the Glendo Corporation there in Kansas. Uh, and this is kind of a it's a spray. It's a suspension that's in a uh, I think it's an alcohol carrier or some kind of solvent carrier, and. Uh, the little spray nozzles, well, they always seem to die on these things. You know, you can dispense with all the screwing around if you just go straight to diamond. It's uh, it's just a much more efficient abrasive than pretty much everything else. <laughs> um, and you'll see, we're just going to do a few strokes here. And I'll flip it over. So I'm using both sides of the lamp. Pay attention here, and you know your uh, your sense of feel is important here because you can feel it's starting to kind of stick to the lap um, as you uh, as you progress. Let's uh, see what we got there. Usually doesn't take much on the uh, on the diamond there. Here we got. And see, and my little, this little rag is kind of, kind of dirty, but, oh yeah. 
Let's see. Let's give it a buff. Let's give it a buff. Oh, yeah. See the colors coming out now. I don't know how well this is going to show up on video, but it's looking pretty... It looks pretty good. Oh yeah, there's that's a good shot right there, right? Wee wee wee. Can uh, can you guys see the camera? Can I see the camera? Yeah, I can see the camera. So we'll do a little more with that. Okay. We'll do a little more with that, and uh, then we'll work on the other side. <clears throat> Finder there. Come on, catch the light there. There we go. What's that? Oh, it must be the the light up above overhead. <laughs> Anyway, so that's three micron diamond, right? Three, yeah, three. So it's the same uh, gr effective grit as this stuff here. You know, I could have just used this the whole way. Um, and sometimes, well, it's more efficient abrasive. So I'm gonna do the other side and then uh, we'll see how uh, it looks all together. Be back in a bit. All right, that's pretty good. This side had a, actually a pretty good scratch in it. I didn't notice it until I started polishing it out. And so it took a little while to kind of work that scratch down. And then uh, on top of that, it, there's a, it looks like I exposed some, some defects in the steel actually. So uh, kind of like a, let's, let's clean this out so you get a good shot of that. Trying to block the camera there. Let's see here. Maybe we can get a, a good uh, a good view of that. Let's see, is that the is that the side with the? No, I think this is it. Uh, I gotta find it now. <laughs> oh yeah, right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll see if I can point it out. Just in case it shows up on video, right? Right there. It looks like there's some little, tiny little porons or something. I don't know what it is exactly. Anyway, there's the V. The V is pretty good. Um, and then, you know, I don't think I would do these surfaces here. What I would probably do is do the bottom. So there's okay. That's a good. That's a good counterpoint. So this is how the V started out. That was the finish on the V, and that's just off the surface grinder. 60 grit wheel off the surface grinder. You know, it's a pretty good finish. Okay, um, but uh, not nearly as good as that. So uh, okay. Well, I'll do the bottom. See you later. Well, I couldn't leave you guys hanging. You knew you knew I was going to lap the bottom of this too, so we'll, we'll give you a nice reveal here. So you see, I got graded cloths here to uh, oop, to clean the bottom. Let's see what we got. Yeah, looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get the get the camera in there. Got the camera? That yeah, looks like the camera. <laughs> Oh, no, that's me. <laughs> I should probably clarify uh, a little bit. You know, we, we made this lap uh, kind of on camera, uh, off and on, and this was just made out of a chunk of, uh, of cast iron, and this is what we, we uh, lapped the V on, okay? Um, but I didn't lap the, uh, the base of this, on, the, on this particular one. I use this guy here. And this is cast iron as well. And this is a commercial one. Um, so I did the, the flat surface on this one here, okay? Uh, just to be clear uh, about 
how that went down. So, and on this one, I just went straight to diamond on, on this one here, uh, three micron and, uh, and then, uh, um, you know, uh, a finish with, with one, I finished with one on that one. So, so let's, uh, uh, let's evaluate this surface. Let's check it out and uh, see just how flat it is. All right, this is a uh, Lapmaster monochromatic light source. Uh, so it's a it's a single wavelength of light, and uh, we use this in conjunction with a uh, with an optical flat, which is what this is here. This is a uh, uh, you know, I don't know if this one's quartz or it's probably just quartz. Um, I don't think it's any special glass. Well, other than it's a, a very stable glass. Um, and this has been lapped very, very, very flat to within you know, fractions of a, of a wavelength of light. Okay. And then by laying this on this surface and having this light pass through the optical flat and reflect off of this surface, we get an interference pattern that we can um, determine what the surface topology is of, uh, of, a, uh, of a flat surface, okay? Uh, and we can see that it's flat or not flat or uh, where the high spots or low spots are. Now we lap the, uh, this Anton V block here on the bottom and uh, so we're going we're gonna to test it with the optical flat. And I also have a Minotoyo gauge block here just as a kind of a comparison. Uh, so you can see what a really good surface looks like, okay? And uh, I, don't, I'm, I don't expect this to be as good as that. Um, um, and you'll be able to see the difference. So I'm going to reframe the shot here and make sure I can see the interference bands. And, um, and then uh, we'll take a look at them. So it's a little bit of an art form to get the, I don't know if it's an art form, maybe that's not the right word, uh, to get the flat on there uh, without getting anything underneath it. So it's, it's a little bit of a trick to do that. So the way we read this, I don't have a straight edge on me here, is uh, you can see if this was perfectly flat, the, those lines that you see, those interference lines, would be perfectly straight, okay? So how we read that is by how much bow is, uh, is in those lines, right? And so if you draw a straight line across one of them, how many, how many bands does it cut, right? And my magnifier on here, let's see, we got one. So it's, you know, two or three light bands right now. And those are separated by 11 millionths of an inch right there. So the bottom is flat to 20 millionths or something like that, 20 to 30 millionths. And um, um, so now let's, let's take a look at uh, the Mitotoyo uh, gauge block here. And let me see if I can transfer this over without uh, fussing around with it too much here. Let me pop that loose. Clean that. Let's see if we can get that on there. Okay, and let's see. Let me, let me get that up in there. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera. I mean, I can see them. Let's see. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, you, you can see them. Okay. So you see how those are really straight? Really straight. Now, the spacing doesn't matter in this case. Uh, that just means the the wedge of air is thicker than uh, um, if I push down on these, they'll spread out a little bit. Okay, but what we're looking at is how straight those are. Okay, and those are really straight. <laughs> so that is flatter than 11 millionths of an inch. Okay, uh, and in fact, I think they're flat to um, less than five millionths, I think, is uh, one of the specs there for gauge blocks. Okay, that's kind of cool. So anyway, just our little horsing around lapping on that uh, did pretty good. Uh, nice finish, it looks good, but it's, it's not that good. So that's the goal right there is to try to get uh, something that looks like that. And uh, then you know you're, uh, you got control, of your, uh, got control of your process there, okay? All right. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you like that. We're going to do some more lapping, uh, lapping videos. And uh, it's a real kind of an interesting subject, so uh, we'll do a few more.